Uh, greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba, and welcome to our Africa for the Africans Tours and Investment uh, conference call. Tonight um, is uh, July the 7th, 2019, and I literally just got back uh, from Ghana uh, last month. Uh, it was uh, June 12th. So I just got back from three weeks of Ghana, and uh, here to just go over all of the tour schedule for uh, 2019 and 2020. Uh, for Ghana and South Africa. All right, uh, family, I'm, uh, what I'm going to start from is the uh, conference call newsletter that uh, I've been sending out. Uh, so this one uh, marks a uh, conference call Sunday, July 7th from 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 8, Ghana and South Africa tours. And so the main thing about this uh, conference call email is that um, it's sent from email marketing or email company uh, called MailChimp. So for those who uh, end up usually just resending it um, from my email address, uh, Africa for Africans email. But um, for those who um, every once in a while just check your junk mail and just set it to where it just won't show it uh, in your spam box and just show it in your inbox. But um, for the most part, I'm realizing that uh, a lot of the newsletters are going into people's junk mail and they're not able to access it and that's kind of why I resend it um, via email and also uh, do a reminder and also post it on Facebook in the Ghana, in a different Ghana and in the uh, South Africa uh, group page. As far as the newsletter, for those who need to access the uh, previous newsletters, what you do is go to our website africaforthafricans.org and what I'm doing is just making sure that uh, we have everything on the website. That way, it's just a central point for all of the tour and investment uh, information. So as soon as you uh, go on the website, uh, you'll see a link that says join our, our mailing list. So once you click on that, uh, but also it's a click to view all newsletters and to join our mailing list. So it's two things. It's to give you a list of all the previous uh, MailChimp uh, email newsletters. It's also for those who you know, are not on the email list and want to add themselves to the email list, you can just click on join and then add your name, number, and email address and it automatically will be on a list of all the people that we have when we do fresh newsletters or tour updates and send them out. Uh, so that's one of the main things I uh, just want to let everybody just uh, know, especially if you're, you know, you're on the tour with us or if you're looking for information to share. But at the same time, too, it's the best way for us to put together pictures and, and links together um, versus just sending it in a general email from Emerson. So now as far as our website, uh, africaforafricans.org, uh, once you uh, get on the website, you'll see a uh, playlist on your left side. And if it doesn't come up um, or you have one of these computers where flash is disabled, it'll just say enable flash or update flash. So the slideshow which shows some of the first uh, 12 years of photos of this traveling around different countries or different parts of Africa. It would be from 2004 to 2016. And all of the new pictures are on um, the Facebook, um, which is the best way for me to have real galleries of photos with uh, descriptions and details. So if anybody is born and where you know, the new pictures are, that's uh, where they are. So I always share them on the different group page or if you're on a you know, Facebook page. So I usually just send them out uh, that way and you know, try to get as much documentation as far as I experience traveling around Ghana. Uh, share it online as much as possible. And then once you come down to the website, um, I got several things on the main menu. So the first thing you see is the Garvey Town community in Ghana. Once you click on that link, for those who are interested in Garvey Town, it's part of the May and the December Ghana itinerary. We usually go there for about two to three hours and we have a business conference that we talk about that level of investment. And we have a separate conference call towards the end of um, every month. And so that email is sent in the uh, email newsletter. Right. And then also on the, um, the Garvey Town uh, Facebook page. And all these group pages, can be, you, know, you can find them by just typing in the title of them. But also, um, what we have uh, below the, that investment, since that's the only investment that we have, um, 
uh, which includes a whole lot of investment. Uh, so Garvey Town is just more than just a community. It's a lot of different things going on in it. Uh, so we have South Africa Roots and Culture Tour, and that's November 20th to the 30th, 2020. Uh, so the same thing, once you click on that, all the tour information open up itinerary and all the details that you need uh, to be clear on before you can just you know, move forward. Uh, Ghana Tour May 2020, and uh, those dates are May 25th to June 5th. Uh, Ghana tour December 2019, so that's uh, December 24th to January 20th. Uh, this goes off into New Year. And then the tour we're about to talk about, which is the next journey that I have, is uh, South Africa Roots and Culture Tour, November 2019. Once you click on the uh, link off the main menu, uh, information does open up, and I always uh, try to go to some of this, sometimes longer than others. But the um, reason I go through this documentation is, you know, whenever, whoever is listening to the call that, you know, maybe they're new to the information that, I just want to let everyone always know that we have these tour details on the main menu of the website, and I try to put the tour dates up um, from anywhere from as early as a year and a half to the latest uh, one year before the tour, and that's us organizing flight information, lodging and everything. Um, and that way you, you have a clear view of of what we've flown with. But whatever we write on these itineraries, that's what we follow. The goal is to complete 100% of the itinerary, right? And worst case is usually maybe it's one thing that we have to adjust. Um, so these all these itineraries are based on experience and based on this knowledge and the people that we have in the country. Uh, so uh, um, tour overview, South Africa Roots and Culture Tour, November 2019. So this is kind of in the conjunction with the uh, itinerary, so I'm not going to go through the itinerary. All right, so the tour is 3,700, and that includes all your flights, your flights from the U.S. to South Africa and from Johannesburg to Cape Town and back to Johannesburg. It also it's a full package. I um, was able just to put more on this one and just make it one price. Uh, transportation and tours throughout uh, South Africa, so... That's us being in South Africa for five days in Johannesburg and three days in Cape Town. Uh, if we have someone that's open to doing exercise, uh, we just usually encourage uh, daily exercise and meditation. So sometimes I might be out there, sometimes someone else may be out there. But if no one's out there, we just encourage people just to um, get up earlier and just stretch and exercise and just have a more energetic morning. Uh, daily continental breakfast, lunch, and gourmet dinners are set for this uh, journey and then also uh, the South Africa journey right now is 16 of us so it's a little smaller group size in Miami you know the group size we had in Ethiopia and Brazil it's just easier to just move things around at the same time to set it to where you can just put everything in one package All right, we don't have a true business and investment uh, conference but uh, what I'm doing is putting that energy out there so as we begin to get more and more people that we have there in South Africa you know, basically just have gatherings and talk about um, opportunities in South Africa. Um, when we connect to the African continent, we should also look at uh, possible investments uh, and possible way of living and doing business in that specific country. And that's just what I've been pushing from the beginning. Um, it's always been tours and investments, you know, um, uh, you know, tours to get you familiar and get you connected to the country and then the investment to get you to build a future. Right. Uh, entrance to all access, um, entrance and access to all sites and activities. And we have our certified uh, English-speaking guides and all the tours that we have. And the only thing that's not included is the uh, $50 group tip, uh, which is part of the tips for staff, crew, and people that uh, we work with. And then if there's any camera slash camcorder fees at any site, because you just never know at times when you know with the sites you go to. You shouldn't have a problem um, with that, but if so, maybe the you, know, you have to pay 50 cent or a dollar for your camera. You just never know. But I always put that out there just in case. And also the five days I have in uh, Johannesburg, what I'm going to do is just go over this uh, overview of the different things that uh, we have set up. And these are just some of what we have set up you know, as an overview. First of all, we're staying at the... Uh, it's a, it was formerly a, a Portia Hotel, uh, Johannesburg, uh, Parktonian, but uh, 
it's been bought out by the Marriott, so that's why you see the link for Marriott. And that's the same in uh, Cape Town. So for those who want to be clear about the hotel that we're staying at, you know, click on a link and uh, you check it out to have a link organized where you'll be able to, s to see a view of it. So it's a um, three-star lodging or three-star um, hotel accommodation. So that's what I have on there also, three and four-star hotel accommodation. So this is a little different from the Ghana hotel setup. The hotels are a lot more nice on this one, but um, you know, it's all based on whatever tour you're doing. In this situation, that's the option that uh, we have, and Cape Town and Johannesburg are two uh, major cities that have those infrastructures and set up. And I'll talk more about that when I get to Ghana, because we go around a few different regions in Ghana, and um, outside of Accra and Kumasi, usually you're limited in certain lodging, but nevertheless, you know, when we go further out the country, we try to transform people's minds to not think about all these fancy lodging, because that's not what it's about. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, this South Africa journey is built for that one. So for those who are looking for a little more uh, comfort as far as that, that's you know this is as good as you uh, get. And it's also limited in movements. You're doing more flying than anything else. The, the drives are not long, except for you know, the safari. Uh, but you know, so and then instead of you know, you're flying from Johannesburg to Cape Town, so it cuts down certain movements, and you're only doing two cities. So very you know unique structure of uh, Generally put together, and so you can just enjoy the most of uh, South Africa. Now, the Sedi Cultural Village, based on the Creator of Humankind, so that's a presentation we're going to get one day, and we'll be able to just connect into Creator of Mankind, so things are more organized to give you a feel of how traditional culture look. All right, Mandela House in Orlando, West Soweto. All right, All right. So that's a natural national monument there. Now. Hector Peterson Memorial and Museum. Uh, the Apartheid Museum, which is architecturally interested and packed with thoughtful, open, brutal reminders of South Africa um, history uh, or apartheid history. Uh, so most of what you see as far as what we have is based on apartheid and based on you know, the breakthrough from that. So a lot of things are relevant to that. That's one of the biggest things that stand out there in Johannesburg. Old Fort at Constitutional Hill. And I'll talk about the safari. So it's at Pilanisburg Game Reserve. And so that's a full safari. So we leave in the morning, we come back at night. And lodging at Fortier Hotel Johannesburg or Marriott Hotel Johannesburg. All right, so once you finish, um, it's a short two hour flight to Cape Town. Uh, so what we have set up there is our District 6 Museum and learn about the apartheid history. A township tour including Langa and we're going to, we're going to take also a ferry to UNESCO uh, listed Robin Island for a tour of the former prison for political prisoners uh, this is where Nelson Mandela spent 18 of his 27 years in prison a panoramic sight over the city from the top of Table Mountain um, Cape Town Malay quarters and learn about the neighborhood fascinating history Castle of Good Hope and the Minerton uh, Lighthouse, uh, Cape Town Diamond, Diamond Mine Works, and see South Africa Finest Jewelry. So those are set to like a two-day tour as far as just leaving out like um, 9 o'clock or so and coming back around uh, 4 or 5 or maybe earlier. Depends on the flow of things. But I have it broken up uh, into you know, two, two exciting days and where things are close enough to where we're not doing too much driving. And then I have the link right there to the uh, Waterfront uh, Break Lodge uh, Marriott uh, Motel. That's uh, really it um, for uh, South Africa. And um, one of the best things about South Africa is none of us need a visa. Right. Click back on the South Africa link and make sure I didn't leave anything out. And then the main thing uh, for those who are traveling to South Africa with us is to click on the uh, general terms. And the general terms will give you details about cancellations, payments, and then um, everyone who's uh, responsible for all the things that's going on uh, in the tour. As far as the general terms also, um, this one doesn't go too much into, which I'll talk more about when we talk about Ghana, but the main thing is when I want to read the details and be clear on what we have in this, ask the right questions and yeah, call and communicate, 
That way we just have the right energy of people on the tour because at the end of the day, you know, we just want, you know, we're there in the African continent uh, you know, for a short period of time and we have to enjoy as much of it as possible because it's not every day you get to be in beautiful tropical Africa. So the last set of things I have on here is a departure reminder list. So that is the list that I give you certain reminders and also remind everyone that, you know, um, that you are still in, in Africa and no matter how, you know, now, no matter what of the situation is set up there, it's not America. Um, last time I went to South Africa, it reminded me of Atlanta, and we look, you know, somewhere in, a, in in the Western world. But that's only certain parts of it. But at the same time, too, it's you know, it's an experience that we just want people to be open with and flow with that tenor and flow with energy. We're looking to do a social nightlife for those who want to go out at nighttime, and for those who want to you know, maybe stay back at a hotel and relax and get massages or and things like that, and you know, maybe just want to do more relaxing. Now, those are things that uh, you can do. But you know, we have days also in Cape Town where even the the last day where we find out very late, um, we can you know, you know go to a nice uh, beach and just uh, kick back and relax and just enjoy it. So, wanted to also be for where people can relax and just enjoy it, um, make it be a little bit of everything. Uh, the thing that this is just not rich in is you know, it just the the hardcore roots and culture and things like that. But you know, like I was telling you, one, South Africa is more of just, it's more closer to a European looking country in certain parts, especially where we go into two major cities. But uh, nevertheless, it is Africa and it is a beautiful, nice, energetic country. And just looking forward to building wonderful relationships and introducing people to a lot of the people that we know uh, there. And then um, just look to keep doing this journey every November. Uh, it's a perfect time doing the Thanksgiving break where you know those of us who are off, off that time can just take less vacation days. Uh, so try the best to work the schedule to where when people have time off. And you know, as I talk about similar things with the uh, Ghana schedule in December. Uh, so family, um, and what I'm going to be doing is reaching out to everybody that's traveling with us to South Africa as I begin to finalize certain things like roommates and, and those type of setups and see if anyone maybe just wants single supplement and just you know, have more of a direct call, even though this is more general information, you can ask anything. So with that saying, said family, uh, I'm open things up for questions as far as this, uh, in reference to the South Africa tour only, please. Um, I'll be getting to talk about the Ghana tour in the next uh, few minutes as soon as we finish with uh, the South Africa Q&A. So once, what you have to do uh, is press uh, star six to mute yourself. I'll take that as no questions. Uh, so when we open up the next set of uh, questions, uh, which will be for both um, journeys, you can just ask uh, questions then. So family, let me get back on the main menu. I'm going to click on Ghana, December uh, 2019. And so the exact dates are December 24th to January 4th. Uh, right now we do have 15 uh, people. And looking to most I can add is a full bus load, which is 40. I do expect this uh, journey to be a little smaller, you know, so, but uh, look to have a group size within the range that we always shoot for, a um, minimum group of 20 to 30, and closer to the 30, which allows us to get a, you know, a bigger uh, coach bus, which the best thing about uh, doing uh, bigger groups is when you're driving around the country, you can literally... Uh, Drive in comfort, and then the bigger bus comes with TV, comes with microphone, it comes with you know uh, the seats recline and things like that. Uh, the South Africa journey uh, doesn't have that fancy of a bus, uh, just like a regular coaster, um, and which is you know, a comfortable ride. But at the same time, to while we're journeying South Africa, we the journeys a little shorter. Uh, so when we, you know, so sometimes we have parts of Ghana where we drive in literally is five hours. Um, on the last uh, tour that we did, we went to Takarada, which is the only time that I have that schedule. So we had to leave from Kumasi all the way to uh, Takarada. It took about, us about seven hours. Uh, so um, when you're driving that long, you want to be able to just drive in you know, a certain level of comfort. So, but you know that this journey um, is set up for you know, for that. But nevertheless, if we don't get a big group, it's absolutely fine. Um, the smallest group of people I've had is eight uh, in. 2006 and the largest uh, in November 2017, which is uh, 43 of us. 
Uh, so, you know, you just, you know, you know, it's hard to get one person to come to Africa when she wants us that much people. So, you know, you're literally just, we're literally just thankful for those who show interest and literally just want to come on the journey and do our best to, you know, when we have smaller groups to work the adjustment as much as possible so we don't have to reduce anything as far as on the tour schedule. Uh, so my goal is whatever we have on the tour itineraries, regardless of the group size, is to do that. Uh, the only thing that will literally change is the bus size. And if anything else needs to be changed or adjusted, uh, it's like a direct conversation I have with a smaller group, so which is, which is always easier if you have a group of eight to twelve people to just say, "Hey, uh, this is the situation. What you think, uh, or so on." But beyond that, our goal is to just you know give you everything that you see the last few years because uh, over the last um, three years, um, all the tours we have had every six months, the last three years have been um, anywhere from uh, about twenty-five to um, forty people. So that's, uh, you know, what we uh, work for. But uh, at the same time, too, it, it's what it is sometimes when you come up with new dates. So these are fresh dates. It's, uh, it's some that you know, recently, it's dates that recently came up with a few months ago. So do my best to uh, you know, get it out as much as possible. So we do have space family. So if any folks are interested, let's share it with them. Um, what I did, because I know the level of drama that's coming, is I... I secured, um, I have to look at the level of tickets we have. I've secured over 32 tickets, so I book in all the popular routes because when you go into Ghana around this time or just you know, some of these other countries, like for this, like um, you know, Brazil is like a perfect example, other than Ghana. You know, you look, the ticket is like 12, 1400 or whatever, and then, then a few months before that time, and everyone decided they want to go to these countries and things, the, the price are doubles up. So that's why I just basically have a system that I do where I, just, I always got group booking. Um, I set every, everything up to the Delta Airlines uh, group booking and lock routes down. Because if you don't have flights, you're not going anywhere. And then you know, naturally, if, if the group is not the size, it needs you to you know, resend certain tickets back by certain dates. So you know, letting everyone know that uh, some people you know, have made up their mind or so on. Um, let me know something that way. I can hold certain you know tickets and things for you because once we release the tickets three months before we leave, because three months before we leave, we're literally going to only hold the tickets that people have paid deposit on naturally. Like, but beyond that, uh, family, uh, this journey is um, 3,700 and includes your flights and full accommodation with the exception of lunch, uh, group tips. The visa, camera, camcorder fees, those are, not, those are all the things that's not included. Everything else is included is the uh, same thing as we talk about with the South Africa tour package. Transportation and tours uh, throughout Ghana, uh, daily exercise meditation session, daily continental breakfast and gourmet dinner, two and three star hotel accommodations, and the same thing, double occupancy. As you can see, there's a drop off instead of three to four star, it's uh, two to three star. Because when we go to when we go to Cape Coast Elmina, we're limited on access to the only place I know that has like a three or four star resort is Coconut Grove, and <laughs> it's a nightmare doing booking and dealing with them. And then they put us out of the district of where we need to be to to, you know, to do what we came to do, which is to connect to uh, uh, connect to One Africa, connect to the ancestral lineage uh, there. Uh, so. Uh, one Africa is one of the um, One Africa is there in Elmina, but also we have a brand new hotel called the Carrick Hotel. Now One Africa did just start putting in hot water, but there's no AC, there's no fridge, and there's no TV, and the, there's limited only ten rooms. Um, we have rooms number eight and nine for single people, and everything else is uh, two people to a room. And the setup is for me personally. You can build a fancy five-star hotel there. If One Africa is there. I'm going, and I, and I stay in Chalet Number Two, and I operate my business and everything from there. And most of our rooms are close to the beach. It's nice and cool. It's just a perfect environment. But uh, the reason why we're using Carrick Hotel because we don't want to deal with any drama of people feeling a certain way. One Africa is a little older hotel, and it is a resort you know, on the beach. Um, now, but the other hotels across the street, so you literally have to walk across the street. Uh, so that hotel have brand new fridge, big bed, big bathroom, and you know, so you have to choose whether you want to be on the beach and you know, 
enjoy you know, enjoy one Africa like you know you're there in Jamaica with me, you know, you know the Jamaica Ghana, um, you know, ask, or if you want to just have your air conditioned in your room and your fridge, and you rather just walk across the street. Uh, so my goal is to go over that every single time until we leave, and then when I eventually uh, start putting the roommates together, that's what I'll talk with everyone one about. Uh, but you no, know, always. I highly recommend for those who are open to the experience, stay at One Africa. And she does put the, the hot water heaters in, so at least now you can get you know the nice hot shower. The, uh, it's usually about 80 degrees there when we get there, um, but you know, for, you know we don't want to deprive anyone from certain things. So, but nevertheless, that's one of the most important things right there because we you know you know we try to go over and explain to everyone that this is not a four star, five star setups. And we do our best to make sure that uh, we talk with owner and manager, make sure everything is neat, organized, clean, and as best as possible. To you. But if you're somebody that have a high class attitude, you're not, and you feel a certain way, you know. Which to me, if you feel that way, you shouldn't be rolling with us in the first place because you know you see, you know, and especially if you look at the flow of our operate and do business, and you see me personally on YouTube and everything, and the way we move and things. You know, we try to just be about us and try to be cool with each other and try to be like the best of friends and family and just you know, try to build something special. So I always try to put myself in a situation where we're not, you know, even when we go to Ghana, where we're not just making it, making it feel like we're better than people and hold, you know, act in a certain way. But some of those are the behaviors that cause our folks, our people in Africa to not like some of us that think, you know, because they basically say we act like, snobbish or uptight white people. But nevertheless, you know, you know, this journey is set for comfort, it's set for me to be good, but that's just something that has to be clear. Moving down from there, uh, we do have an incredible business investment conference and that is only in Accra. Um, that's there for the first few days when we get to Accra. So the schedule is set up for four days in Accra, uh, three days in Kumasi, and three days in Cape Coast, Elmina. But in this turn, what I had to do was adjust a schedule um, just this time, and maybe in the future I may have to do it. Once we leave Accra for the four days, we're going to leave and then go to Garby Town. Then we're going to spend three days in Cape Coast, Elmina. The last three days we're going to spend in Kumasi, and then we I timed it for us to leave early because we, it is a five-hour ride from Kumasi back to the Accra airport. And if we're leaving from um, Cape Coast, Elmina, usually we would go to Garby Town, and Garvey Town is usually about an hour and a half away from uh, the airport. Two hours max based on traffic. The three different areas are named. Um, what I've set up is an incredible itinerary where uh, we're set to, majority of us are set to fly on Delta Airlines. Some of us will be on KLM. And all of our flights connect to um, Amsterdam. Uh, once, we all, once we all meet in Amsterdam on the uh, day of uh, December 25th, uh, we'll just be able to just do a quick uh, intro and connect, and then we'll all leave on the same flight on KLM uh, directly to Accra, Ghana. And uh, once we get there, uh, we have our tour bus and our full staff that's out there and other guys that's there to help us and just escort us and everything. Uh, they'll be waiting for us. So I do a few of these Welcome to Ghana videos just to show you once you leave from outside the airport, there's the love and energy of people that's waiting for you. Um, so people are used to us coming and, you know, uh, we do our best to make sure when we get there, you know, we have a nice welcome party for us and a nice big VIP bus so we can just enjoy our journey. And the main thing that's uh, set um, in Ghana on gourmet dinner, uh, most of it is is going to be at uh, the different hotels that we eat at. Uh, there are a few times where we, we there's one night especially when we got to the Jamrat Jamaican restaurant um, that's uh, part of our you know, across schedule. It's a nice uh, restaurant, so. Try to just adjust the itinerary as much as possible to the showcase as many things. So that's one of those nice special nights out. All right, then the other thing I talked about, the visa wasn't uh, included. Let me go to more about the visa. Once you go back in the tour link, there's a link that says visa, but everyone that's traveling with us or everyone that's reached out to me in reference to the tours, I always make sure that uh, everyone get a visa email so you can upfront print it out, go through it. But what we highly recommend is that everyone get a multiple entry visa and do that multiple entry visa anywhere from three to six months before you leave. The multiple entry visa is $100, and it's literally good for anywhere from one to five years. And I've gotten three of them, the first one five years, uh, the next one five years, and then the last one three years, which will expire 
in, in uh, two years. Right, also in this overview, um, a list Accra, four days, a variety of things that we have that I also have mentioned in Accra is the city tour, including the Black Star Square, Independence Arch, W.E.B. Du Bois Center, George Padmore Library, Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park, the Arts and Culture Center, the University of Ghana Campus Tour, walk through century-old Avery Botanic Gardens. We're going to stop outside of Rita Mali House, home of Studio One and also the foundation. And then we're going to head to Trinity Home Foundation up in the mountains, which is a school slash orphanage that uh, we've been dealing with since um, we've been since October 2007. It's uh, one of the best energies that we have on the journey. Avery Wood Carving Village, for those who just want to just get a classic uh, wood carving. And then I'll talk about the Repatriation Investment Conference, which will be a two-hour session, and it will deal with living, doing business, investing, deal with um, you have presentation from legal presentation from uh, one or two lawyers. Uh, you have the Black Star Lion Credit Union that will be there. And they'll be uh, just talking to us about the different level of investments. Uh, you have food sovereignty, and that's a lot of wonderful networking. So I always um, just recommend everyone. I know the day that when we do the business conference is when we do the city tour. It's a long day, just like the first four days. But um, you know, once we finish our uh, dinner, um, we have the conference set up upstairs in the, in the main conference room in the Micklin. And you now the goal is just to connect everyone and just use that time to really build a connection. And for those who plan or want to stay longer, um, I always have a lot of people that I can introduce you to that you can stay with them or connect with them. Uh, so that's another thing to, to for the journey. Any of the journeys that we travel on, if you want to stay longer and do something different, maybe go to different countries, different parts of the, the, that country, uh, just reach out ahead of time. Only thing I have to do is just talk with our group booking and give them the dates when you want to return and just make sure that you know we have that taken care ahead of time. That way it doesn't cost you more in the end. Because when you set these things up up front, it's one thing. And then when you have to change tickets, um, the change fee of a ticket, ex by example, is $350. And then if, the, 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 then if it's in a different season or, or if the flight uh, change, uh, then you have to pay the difference. Uh, so you can save you all of that by just giving us the dates uh, that you want to return. And then just do your best to pick a date, stick with it, and work it out. And you know, if you need any help with anything in the country, you know, I've been going there for 12 and a half years, been there 16 times, and um, there's not a lot of people all around the country. And the only reason why I go is because I love the energy of the people, I love the energy of the country, and you know, I can always say Ghana, you know, good folks, and I must say I don't have too much problems other than just basic issues that we can handle. All right, so that is a full four days in Accra, and that's literally three days going out. So. It may just, you know, so the last, the, 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 the first day of the city tour, the second day we go to the mountains, and the third day we're going to Prom Prom to connect with uh, folks in the African diaspora that have repatriated and build some wonderful things in that area. Uh, so, you know, if you need time off, literally you have to take the time off that you need to stay longer. Other than that, it's a full schedule, and I'm a person that do nightlife, get my security and to get uh, some, you know, some of the guys I know and Whoever want to go out, we just take them out and we go socialize and connect and network. So just trying to organize it to where we can get the best of the journey as possible. But at the same time, to just like I explained about South Africa, if you need more time to relax or chill or refocus on some other things, then you know, I just recommend that you just take a time off and everything. And if you're not going to come with us, just let us know. And if you're going to come with us and make another move, then let us know that we're not looking for you. All right, uh, Elmina and Cape Coast in the central region, three days. So we're going to be going to Sin Manso, the last battle for our stolen African ancestors, Elmina and uh, Cape Coast Holocaust Dungeon. So what I'll do is I'll fix this. We're going to either Elmina or Cape Coast Holocaust Dungeon. Uh, but that will also be explained in a tenor for clarity, so um, don't want to mislead anyone. Um, we've got to the point where we have set it now to where if you we, we do Cape Coast Holocaust Dungeons and then for those who want to go to Elmina they can you know, they'll have time to go that same day or the next day but uh, we have worked it out to you know, work it out to where that's a full that's a full day and uh, going to both dungeons is not the wisest thing for a group and things like that so 
that's one thing that's uh, been adjusted over the last uh, few years. Um, we have a Cape Coast University campus tour as we begin to go to wherever part of Ghana we go to, we just look to connect people and just at least do a campus tour because uh, you know, I've even gotten questions where, you know what I mean, it's, and it's no big deal if there are universities in Africa, but um, schools and campuses and orphanages are things that, you know, we put on these itineraries as a way to just connect people more with what's going on in the country and then we record everything to share documentation with us moving around the country. And it's just been one way to get people to realize that Ghana is a modern country and it has all the things that we need to, you know, to build what we need to build as a people and connect with our own brothers and sisters. So that's a part of this kind of journey and energy. All right, uh, networking with uh, Sister Amicus at One Africa. And we're going to go to the Garvey Town, 300 Acres, community in Gamoa, Ezequa. Uh, donations and school supplies to the Marcus Garvey School in Gamoa. And also we're going to go to the Akoma Academy. That's the other school that we have. And Lajin, um, like I was saying, is at One Africa Resort or Carrick Hotel. And One Africa has a link for Carrick. You, you more have to Google it, uh, and that will give you an idea. But these are the things we want people to be clear on. And then the last region we're going into is Kumasi in the Ashanti region, uh, three days. Uh, so we're going to tour the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, do a city tour of Kumasi. Yeah. Uh, we're going to go to the Kota Center and also the Ashanti Palace. Along beyond that, uh, we look to go to a few different craft villages so you can actually go to the actual uh, village communities where the crafts are being made. So these are just a full flow itinerary and then in this case you're staying at the Miklin and Kumasi which is a three star hotel and the one in Accra is a two star and so that's where we get a two to three star from and then One Africa is just a resort in paradise, there's no stars. Like Africa say that's where all the stars come. Uh, so it's what it is and and that is the flow of what we have and that's the same flow as kind of built into the itinerary but the overview just covers everything. Now the main thing uh, I want to talk about is uh, the general terms. I uh, just want everybody to read these general terms and just be clear on on things and it's, um, it covers all the details of so payment schedules, the tour package, uh, final payment, methods of payment, cancellation, uh, refund, disabled tour participant, and there's a link of this um, responsibilities and what I've said on here is called important tour rules and notes for Ghana tour December 2019. I'm going to just read this uh, word for word but all of our Ghana tour itineraries we have had to put this up because we have had you know usually if we have 30 people we maybe have one or two people that literally is just not a fit with everyone else and causes more problems and irritation and problems than anything else. And the only way I've known this is because from the first time I went to Ghana till the last time and every time in between it's always the same situation. You know, but nevertheless, uh, we understand there's people who are just going to just not look at information even though you're trying to go to it and let them know that make sure you're clear on what kind of journey you're getting. And this is more of a pan-African organized journey for us to enjoy ourselves, to focus on ourselves, to not be disturbed by anyone and for not and also for not just act out of bounds to where we you know we feel like we have to do some just complain complain you know I've done these tours for 12 and a half years and I've had my family and every people come different people come with me and I literally talk to people and ask them about whatever we can do to improve and everything and we have done as much as we can do but what I've learned is that Ghana is an experience based on my traveling around other parts of the world and other parts of Africa, this is as good as we're going to get to get a real authentic African experience that's designed for us, that have the things that's relevant to us. And uh, there's only a few places that have African Holocaust dungeons. Senegal is one place, which is literally how I got here, because once I went to Senegal in March of 2004, it literally changed my life to where it brought me here in Ghana to where to highlight our African Holocaust as a major part of our journey. And you know, I talked about earlier that um, One Africa and Cape Coast Elmina is one of those smaller cities, even though it's a major city. It's not highly populated with certain things like Accra and Kumasi. So we want to make sure that people focus and be as comfortable as possible uh, because that is the wrong time to 
that uh, you know then in some cases it's also here where the power may go off a little bit water may go out it's one of those real situations and you know you want everyone to be as cool as possible and I think out of, out of the 16 times I've been there water may have went out about three or four times and that's maybe for a few hours um, so but at any time you can just have you know, those situations and also letting people know that this is Africa that you're going to and the people that you're dealing with and doing business with have things organized as, as, as possible but we also need your help and your energy to be positive and respectable and be, you know, be respected to the whole situation with um, you know we have to deal with so many people that we know um, and you know we're all trying to accommodate and do business it's all of us coming together um, so you know when, if there's issue I tell everyone just come talk to me and we'll figure it out there's no need to outburst or to disrespect our business partners or myself or another tour member by making disrespectful outbursts. We have issues. Let's talk about it, fix it, move forward. Not everybody's going to agree on everything, and we're the people that have to get away from that. Um, I've, you know, and I've, I consider myself one of the most diplomatic person. And you know, but at the end of the day, diplomacy, you know, has its, you know, has its, lim has its limitations, and you know, sometimes you have to shut people down. So, you know, but nevertheless, uh, what I'm recommending everyone do is just go with the flow and enjoy it. And the reason why I do this is because I feel like our brothers and sisters are going to get the best experience in Africa. Yeah? And from, you know, from any little ups or any little lows, when we process it and look at it, you know, you, you know cause I, I'm, every time I go to Ghana or wherever in Africa and I come back, you, know, you end up just appreciating things more. Like you know, even sometimes things don't go always perfect, but at the same time, too, that's the situation in Africa where the people have to build and work together and you know? also I don't want in, in any of us carrying an attitude where we're going to go to any place or any market anywhere and just look, look down on any of us because that's going to just build bad energy we're, we're in a situation where we're looking to build a relationship and reconnect I understand some people may have issues with the whole situation of this you know our, pe our, our involvement as a people in in slavery it's what it is it's, it's unfortunate but it's you know, also people it's a small percentage of people it's a small percentage of us and at the same time too none of us know what people were put in the situation of to to you know to you know to do to, to be a part of you know the wicked schemes that end up having our ancestors in dungeons and being transported across the Atlantic Ocean and that being another part of a continuous oppression of you know African people uh, so I've seen where sometimes people want to get an attitude and get angry talk about you sold us out into slavery like a common Ghanaian or a chief is going to know what we're talking about. Uh, you know, cause, you know, so, um, you know, those are some of the things that, you know, you know and then you know, sometimes we have issues where when I'm telling everyone, if, you know, if you're in the Holocaust dungeons, I'm going to just always just remind all of us, let's play nice and I'll try my best also. Um, unless you know, unless some of these other folks are coming into the Holocaust dungeons and being disrespectful to our energy, then you know we just try to. But there's whites and Asians, and sometimes more than us that are coming in. What you're gonna see is you're gonna see a lot of mixed groups. We're gonna be basically a group of ten or more, the only black full group in like the African Holocaust dungeons, because it's one of those, it's the one of those most it's the biggest uh, most attracted site there in Ghana, the Cape Coast Holocaust dungeon, the same one Obama went to. Uh, so we do our best to contain ourselves as best as possible, but at the same time, too, none of us, I don't want any of us to stand for any disrespect. If somebody is disrespecting you, you got to do what you have to do, whether you curse them out or yell at them. You do what you have to do. Remember that Bomani always got your back because at any moment, any of us can snap into a trance and look at someone that doesn't look like us as an oppressor because none of us know how this all spiritually plays out or how any of this played out. I've been there where I've been completely just like, you know, where it's like you feel like your body is somewhere else and I mean, it's it's like literally hard to explain. And all of this I'm talking about is the African Holocaust Dungeon, which is the main energy that we have. And that time that we're in Cape Coast, Elmina, and that time when it tends, it's usually coming towards the end of the tour when you may have tensions. And, you know, and, and the good thing about this time, we'll actually get there a little earlier, you know, but in, in, in certain things. But it is... Amazing! I've seen grown men cry, like big grown men. That just like just it does different things to you. And I tell people again, when I was in Senegal, I have no idea what happened to me, but I came out those dungeons transformed. Like I had certain just 
things in my mind for the, for, for for months as far as this, the kind of things that I could possibly think that we went through. Uh, but nevertheless, not to get too much into details of that, just literally want us to be prepared. And there's only so much prepared you can be other than just be cool and just be open to the experience and understand that if you have any problems, any issue, come holler at me. We go to the side, we talk, and if we have issues with something, we're going to work at it and get it done, fix it, so we can continue to enjoy ourselves because that's why, you know, we have this journey and we've been around for a while because that's how we deal with situations. You know? and, and it's one of the things where you want to try to get more people connected because it's, you know, it's a situation where a lot of people went and have become great friends and still continue on today, this day because we're so spread out in America to where one organized journey like this put us together. So I just want everybody to be clear on the terms, clear on the type of folks you're rolling with. It's just straight black pan African energy to the highest level, and it's just all about us. And that don't mean that we have any kind of hatred, hatred towards anyone else. It's just the, you know, that we need some of us to hold the line and, and build things for us and be about us. And that's why I highly respect the Garvey Town Community Project, and I'm doing my best to work with them at the highest level so we can build a real community for each other and really be able to build what we need to build as a people for the future. Now, family, that's uh, the flow of what we have for Africa Tours and Investment. And as you can see, there's more things that we have on the website, uh, and we can go to more. But the main thing is, as we do this in sequence, we'll go through everything over a few times. And the best thing to do is to click on the tour link and read all the information from top to bottom. And then you'll be more familiar with anything that we're talking about. And just like the uh, South Africa journey, there's a departure and reminder list of, of your journey. So that's like a summary of all the things that we've talked, we, we would have talked about. And that will give you this preparation list and kind of give you an idea what to get ready for. Uh, so. Everything that we have is information-based operation to get you clear, to get you informed, to get you up to speed and educated on how we do our connection as far as the journey of a lifetime in Africa, which ends up being one of your best, if not your best experience of your lifetime. And then that includes all things accounted for. All right, so, and, uh, so family, and other things that I have on the link, I do have the uh, tour books, which is a collection of tour books that we've done from 2007. You know, and when you come, and if anyone is here, in Georgia, and we meet, and you come to the office, um, you literally see just a list of books from one that's like almost like 20 pages to what we have now, which is 88 pages standard for the last uh, few years. Uh, so that tour book is your program. It's literally your program for the tour. And those who are traveling with us, you get a printed out version. And uh, for the smaller tours that we do, since we don't have a lot of documentation like South Africa, we just print out a small booklet uh, with that tenor and a few basic things in it. Uh, but the main thing about you know, the tour book is that there's a itinerary in it, and it has a picture and this um, a profile of everywhere that we're going to, even thing, places that we may not be going to. Uh, and we just highlight there's an important region or important site. Um, you have our bios, our details. You have you know, to connect, uh, put a nice little history of Marcus Garvey and Kwame Nkrumah. Um, and, you know, that's a guy, a book that you have. You can just, you know, you get up and instead of asking me what we do every morning because I'm going to tell you the night before when we're on the bus. And, you know, that's usually how we go over it. But you can always look in the book and you don't have to have your your own paper. Even if you want to print out your itinerary, it's fine. But the book, you just flip to it and your schedule is right there. Affirmations and just a lot of other wonderful things. And then we have a nice section that's designed for business and investment. Uh, so you know, I have that documentation in there. And the conference calls, I do my best to, uh, well, I end up just sending them out, email, sending them out via email, but um, I have a conference call link and just give you a list of the dates and information for conference calls. And going down the main menu on our website, Africa for Africans, because that's what we're doing um, after you pass the tour. These are the things you see. I have a link for payment options, which is also an email that I sent, just like the visa email, which has an attachment. And that that has information for website payments and things like that. And, and then you just have a few other documents. Uh, some of these are older documents. Repa repatriation, Marcus Garvey Vision, Investments, About Us, General uh, Articles, and then Contact Us. 
So that is all the support information, all the detailed information. And as I was saying, that this is more of this uh, information-based website. Uh, even though you can just enjoy the nice music and enjoy some, um, you know, so far, foundation pictures for for the first 12 years. All right, so family, what I want to do is open things up. What you can do is press star six to unmute yourself. And let me know if you are, let me know your name, where you're calling from, and what's your questions, and and what and naturally what journey you're going on. Hi, Bomani. This is Kim. Can you hear me? Hey, greetings, Kim. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, I'm Kim from California. I'm going on the uh, Ghana uh, tour in December. I have a couple of questions. My first one is if while in Elmina, if we stay at the Carrot, will breakfast and dinner be there, or will we have to cross the street to uh, One Africa for breakfast and dinner? Uh, great question. Uh, what we have set up there is that you have bed and breakfast at the Carrick Hotel. Dinner is at One Africa. And then you can either order uh, lunch at One Africa or the Carrick Hotel. And then One Africa has okay. a situation where if you want to pay for breakfast and you want to order like a real breakfast, she makes specialized breakfast. My next question is, throughout the itinerary, Lunch is not included, but is time given, and are we taken to different places where we can access lunch? Uh, yes. Uh, what we do is we'll go to a location, and the goal is usually either we order ahead of time. It depends on the traffic of the situation of how big the group is, or, or we just sit down and then order, um, and just uh, we have enough time to relax a little bit and eat. Okay. All right. Those are my two questions. Thank you. Absolutely, Kim, and looking forward to connecting with you and your journey with us. And I know you want to come in December, but uh, now that I've really processed it, um, because it is an active journey, uh, if you're better suited and be more physically relaxed in uh, May, we do canopy walks and, you know, we do a little hiking. Well, you know, I've been to Ghana before, so I, I've already done the canopy walk. So that's the day when I would just sit down at the main desk, you know, there at the entrance. So I wouldn't do the canopy walk anyway. Uh, or even um, yet, you can stay at One Africa and get you a massage, get you a clay bath. Uh, correct. Because it's, uh, you know, it's a health spa resort. Yeah, that's more my speed. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I may have to bring my daughter with me so that just in case if I do need the extra help, she'll be there to help me. Okay, so I, I'm going to touch bases with you after the 22nd, like I said earlier. All right, perfect, uh, perfect, and um, and Garvey Town is on both the, all the itineraries, so you'll be able to physically see your plot and see what's going on. Right. Oh, I do have a question about that. Is the bus going to take us back to where the plots are or not? We will have to make that long walk like I saw in one of the videos. Oh, that's so, so I'm glad you watched that video. That is a long walk. <laughs> 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 you know, I you know what I did yes. I started running, so I got there a little faster because uh, they done, they done left me. Because <laughs> <laughs> when on. I watched it, I was like, I, I don't know if I can make that long walk. <laughs> well, yeah, to answer your question directly, um, the goal is eventually to get some kind of small vehicles. Like, you know, golf carts are perfect, there, especially when we're actually living there and, you know, and then, you know, bicycle and all that good stuff. And then you know, the community transportation will take you around. But, yeah, it's uh, – the place is bigger than I even thought. <laughs> when I saw where my plots were, I was like, wow, it's out there. But, uh, but perfect. Uh, but I came, um, but what, we can, what we can also do is uh, we, can get, uh, we can arrange some transportation because that is actually a better idea. So literally, thanks for the suggestion. But uh, if you don't have any more questions, I can mute you and then... Next person, if you can just unmute yourself, give your name, where you're calling from, and your question. This is Diane. Can you hear me? Uh, greetings, Diane. Uh, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. I'm calling from North Carolina. This will be my first time, hopefully, on the trip to Ghana in December. Absolutely. And my question is, it's not a, I read that you have to get that multiple visa eight months or more ahead of time, and so there's not that kind of time for me for December I can explain and all I can get is the single entry. No, I can explain it to you because um, sometimes it's just terminology. 
Um, the, the multiple entry visa you can get at any time, uh, but what we recommend is that individuals get the visa the latest two months before they leave, and you mm -hmm. can get up to ten months before you leave because if you get it for one year, because you can, none of us ever know if it's going to be a one, two, three, four, or five year visa. They just give you that range and let you know it's based on whatever is going on in the country. So, mm -hmm. uh, so you can apply for that any time. And then we're also saying that if you apply for a single entry, it's only good for three months. And then um, yeah, once it's only good for three months, so you literally have to get that two months before you leave. Uh, because if you get it any earlier, you end up getting there and the visa is expired. I've seen that happen. Mm. Okay. Sometimes it honestly doesn't look clear, so I always try my best to keep on explaining that part also. Yeah, okay, good. And my next question is um, uh, mosquitoes. <laughs> is this a time of year? Are they just prevalent all year because it's warm there? Is there something other than just the spray? Are they nets? How does that work? Is it a, is it a problem when you're there with the mosquitoes? Um, uh, me personally, not with me personally. I, mean, I was born, I was born, and I was born for this. Um, I grew up in tropical Jamaica, and it's like my backyard going to Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I do have people who are from different climates that have certain issues, and you know, one, you know, you usually have one or two people maybe get hit by a mosquito or something, and Maybe you put them out for maybe you know, a few hours or so where they just maybe feel a little wheezy or so, and once you take some medicine, you're fine. But uh, mosquito spray, um, and you know, especially at nighttime, and uh, drink bottled water and avoid just eating or accessing any kind of food over gutters and things like that because sometimes people are selling around that environment. Uh, mm. So those are some of the things that draws mosquitoes. And then drinking more local water sometimes depends on where the water source is from. But mm. uh, with that, you know, I do our best to tell everyone to bring any necessary medicine and things like that. And mm -hmm. other than that, uh, it's it's not a situation where you know you're going to get uh, sick, but you are going to go to a point where your body is going to adjust because you're in a different climate. Mhm. Mm mhm. So is it are they so bad that one mosquito bite is it could make you sick? Oh, uh, that one. That happened, well, that happened to one person I know. And oh. she, what happened? She said, she said, you know, she said this one mosquito bite. But you know, I get bit by mosquitoes there too. But it's you know, it also depends on your diet and things like that. Mhm. Mm uh, none of us are like immune to it, even though sometimes I think I am. But at any time, anything can crawl in your skin and bite you. Mm -hmm. uh, Over uh, there, they have mosquito medicine, but I never heard of mosquito medicine here. Yeah, but in the different malaria things. medicine, that's what it's called. Malaria, don't pills or something. And it's a tropical rainforest, so that's um, one of the issues. But we're, we're not really the people that have issues with mosquitoes. You know? uh, West Africa was named at one point a white man's grave because of a lot of white people getting killed by mosquitoes. By oh. Africa. Also here about malaria medicine, I meant to say malaria medicine. White young adults or white folks, they usually just... You see them and they pop any pills and anything. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Okay, um, so the yellow fever vax kind of helps us with that. Um, I, I, I made a mistake when I said yellow fever. I meant to say malaria because malaria pills are for, mala for the malaria, um, you know, for the malaria issue with uh, mosquitoes. As far right. as yellow fever, there's really no um, outbreak or anything. And it's something that I'm not I'm wondering why it's still being recommended, but um, every other country I go to, including South Africa, it's no big deal, and we're not asked to get it. Uh, but half of the people that I travel with don't get yellow fever, and they can't stop us from going into the country because it's not a mandatory situation. It's just recommended. So I usually tell everyone it's up to you to take it or not, but we're all going into Ghana. We're all literally walking through the entrance of Ghana together. Uh, so... Um, we didn't leave no, no no person behind. So if someone is being held up because someone is harassing them for something, it, you know, it's a quick fix. But uh, beyond that, I ask people all the time that travel by so did anybody ask you for a yellow fever card? Most people usually say no. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, another thing, you said that the group for December seems smaller than normal and you might 
change it if it if it does if it get. I mean, what if would, nobody wants to go, then I can't go. But right now we have we have 15 people. But I, I lost a few people already. I lost about four people already, which is fine. I mean, so I'm heavily <laughs> recruiting people to come, and usually all we need is like 12 people. Okay. And I've traveled with eight people before, um, but the best thing about when I get over that 20 something mark is I'm able to upgrade the bus to a mm-hmm. real big red, uh, that red bus that people have seen us mm-hmm. around with mm-hmm. um, in videos. It's mm-hmm. the coolest thing. It's brand new, air conditioned, recline. It's like, you know, it's like how kings and queens move. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, we go from, De- from Atlanta. If I come to Atlanta, we go from Atlanta to Amsterdam and then from Amsterdam. So what is that? I know the whole flight is 10 hours so from Atlanta to Amsterdam is how how, how long across that water? <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Uh, you're looking at about eight and a half uh, to nine hours, and about six and a half on the on the uh, Ghana leg. And then you know you look at the the, the short uh, the short little um, layovers. So literally, uh, most of the time we leave here either eight o'clock or ten o'clock from Atlanta, and we get to Ghana always the same time. Uh, the next day at eight o'clock, and then you factor the time difference in, which is usually about four hours or so, um, yeah, and and so on. So it ends up seeming more like a one hour, a one day flight. But even okay. when we're coming back, we leave at ten o'clock at night, and we get here the next day at around eleven o'clock in the morning. Okay, so, so it's a four hour difference ahead or behind? Oh, it's ahead. So going, so going, it'll seem like it's a twenty. Our flight and then come back. It's like it seems like it's like 11 hours altogether because that's the time difference. But when, mm. when you all look at it, it's like 15, 16 hours of traveling. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, that was my question. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, family. Uh, I didn't realize the time has went on by. And so, family, the line is open. Press star six to unmute yourself and give your name and uh, where you're calling from, your question. And, and while you're doing that, I'm opening up our YouTube page. So, Mani, it's Kim again. One last question. For the um, orphanage, I mean, or rather for the school, would you recommend us bringing cash or bringing school supplies? Um, I would recommend uh, doing either or both. Uh, based on your luggage okay. situation, but all of it else, we try to do a combination of both. Um, school supplies, you know, natural school supplies, some, sometimes we have things where it's easier for us to bring. And then as far as the um, financial donation, that's for, you know, some, that's for, like, orphanage you go to, that's what they use to build the additional buildings. And since I've been going there, I just see new buildings coming up, and I see this, this being improved. All right, let me meet you, Kim. All right, we have a lot of shy people on the call, um, but when you're ready for your question, just uh, unmute yourself right now. Um, just want to give everybody the documentation for the YouTube. It's uh, youtube.com forward slash Bomani2007, or you can type my full name in, Bomani Tayamba, and once you're on YouTube and you see me in the dashiki and you click on the actual name, it loads you to the page uh, that I gave you the link for a little while ago. Um, youtube.com forward slash bomani2007 so that's actually my channel and once you get on my channel you'll see the uploads so that gives you the latest videos of uploads from Ghana tour right now the first day in Accra on tour so those videos are up and then before that I have a bunch of videos on Garvey Town and uh, feedback videos of other people experience and then certain conversations so people can just get an idea of what we think about and what we're about and what we talk about that way you can get an idea to see if you're with the right people, traveling with the right people. Because once again, we want everyone to be as comfortable as possible. And anyone that's not comfortable, then you know, you know, don't want to make you uncomfortable. So just you know, be clear on the journey you're traveling with. Uh, videos on Garvey Town, our community in Ghana. So once you click on that link or click on any of these links, this one is going to give you about a list of 20 videos from conference call presentations, interviews, us on the land, and that's just to build up energy to give people more of an idea of what Garvey Town is about. And you know, while we're working on a bunch of other things, we're just trying to keep a level of documentation going. That way, people don't have to wait 10 years 
until we figure everything out and build a perfect community. All right, um, Africa Tours and Investment Conference Call. Usually whenever I do uh, interviews in certain uh, uh, in certain conference calls, I usually just upload it here. These are more you know, for tours, but um, I do have a separate uh, section for the investment app, which is just the Garvey Town that I just uh, walk you through. Uh, tour members uh, feedback um, Ghana November tour Ghana November 2018 tour highlights. Then I have the other one up here. Where is it? Uh, it was the Ghana May 2019 uh, tour highlights. So not only uploads but also that link, which in the case this link could actually show you the first set of videos that we posted. Um, but it, and those are some of the playlists. But what you do is you when you on my uh, page you click on playlists, and then it's literally going to give you. A whole bunch of playlists because I'm one of the people who believe in organized videos because I have so many. Uh, so um, I'm also getting ready to create a bunch of new topics uh, and put those videos in there. But everything is still based on tours and investments. And then sometimes we have you know, certain social conscious conversations. And as far as Facebook, the Facebook page um, is uh, facebook.com forward slash Bomani. And once you get on the page, uh, you can just click on photos. And then it gives you a list of all the galleries of all the Ghana tours I've been on. And uh, you may see some other tours on there, you know, including Brazil and Ethiopia. Those are some of the other tours that were during the, this era of Ghana from 2006 until now. Right, and literally, the, the photo galleries, are, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's like a lot of pictures. Some galleries, some years, like last year, I think we had six different galleries. And it was like up to, most of them were up to like 250 pictures. Um, but that's honestly, that's literally, literally some of the best pictures because there's a lot more pictures that didn't make it. But if you just document a lot of stuff, I always believe that people are not going to believe me that I went to Africa. Now, as crazy as that sounds, but uh, even still to this day, uh, I just have the same mentality. I just got to, you know, I just got to let my brothers and sisters know what's going on. Got to share with them that, you know, where's the people been lied to. It's the best time I've ever had in my life, and that's why. You know, I do anything and just work hard. Whatever I have to do, just keep on going back and keep on building that relationship and keep on making it work. And it's one of the places where, you know, when you're you know, into blackness and you actually go somewhere and you feel at home, because for the most part, most of us don't feel at home here. We, you know, because based on the complaints and what people talk about, you know, people are not feeling at home. Uh, just like I, you know, I've gotten a collection of calls over the years based on people saying that. You know, you know, they live in the hood, and white folks are coming and upgrading everything and pushing them out. And that's from Brixton, England, to Toronto, Canada, to you know, in New York City, uh, to here in Atlanta, and so on. You know, so you know, it's it's one of those big things where you, as a black person, if you live, where you know, where you know, you you're wanted. People, uh, we want, you know, we want uh, ourselves in Africa. You know, so um, the more we can share and build up that energy, the more we can just, you know, honestly, just make this uh, work. But this is the best we can do as far as just introducing you and connecting with you and certain things. And we recommend other people don't just watch us, but join the party, join the, you know, join the movement, join the energy, um, because you know, realistically, some of us need to be in Africa and set to set things up, you know, to you know, to belong to that future. Because we can't just all this wherever we are, we just let. And like right now, you know, you just see other nations of folks coming in and they're setting shop up. You see the different, you know, different airlines names coming in, and you know, it's it's a, it's a great level of investment there. And that's uh, we and so I feel wrong if I didn't at least push a certain energy because that's one of the biggest things that we have not done over the years. We have a lot of tour buses and people who do tours that come to Ghana from the great scholars back in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s and it's you know it's all about learn about your roots and culture and this and but what about business investment what about nation building so that's the level of energy we build and the level of energy we push and in trying to get more people into this energy and to just literally just be about supporting and building black enterprises. All right, family. So that is uh, the Facebook and YouTube. Uh, went through the newsletters. Um, talk about all aspects of the website. So the links to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Instagram is all on the website right under the main menu after you look through all of the tour links and investment links and tour details and other um, relative information. 
And also, based on one of the tour you're going to, um, you just type in Ghana, May, or Ghana, December, and you'll see one of our you know, one of our tour groups. And just click and add yourself. All right, family. Um, uh, any last questions? Um, it's another site, a lot of the same information, but that's literally what we have. And just want to go over it and record up a documentation and be available. Uh, beyond that, anyone that's interested in any of our tours, investment, anything that we do. You can always call me or text me or you know send an email and we can just talk about anything. Um, I'm here to make this work and make this connection work. I've invested this. It seems like all my life we've just not uh, into this, us trying to really build something and it being beyond this business and more. So a legacy and you know foundation for the rest of us. All right, so anyway, family, I'm going to unmute everyone, and then we're just going to close the uh, conference call. All right, family, so we're unmuted, and just want to tell uh, everyone thank you for joining. I know we changed the date from, last, from the 14th to the 7th, but I'm going to edit this conference call, work on it, and get it out to everybody else uh, who may have not seen the uh, change of dates. But thank everyone for their time, and thank you for just reading your email and you know, focusing on that you know that we have a conference call and we need people to join and everything. Uh, so everyone, uh, good night. Enjoy, you know, enjoy your day, and um, have a wonderful week if you're working for yourself or working uh, on the plantation. And we'll keep in touch. And I'm here available next time. I literally look to leave this body of land is to go to South Africa, November 22nd. So until then, I'm literally here. So you reach out to me, you get me. And other than that, everyone take care and we'll keep in touch. All right, good night. Thank you.